Welcome back to another lesson in Physiology Madness with Dr. H. Hopefully going to make this one short and sweet. This particular video is also going to be related to endocrinology and hormones. But we're going to focus in on how hormones are transported in the blood. Now, if you watched my previous video, <clears throat> you saw and, and already learned about the fact that hormones can, can be either classified, classified as water-soluble, or lipid-soluble. Lipid-soluble hormones such as steroids, T3, T4, and that's kind of the list, or water-soluble such as big peptides, large and in charge, and then little biogenic amines. So we're going to write those two down one more time. So we're going to have water-soluble hormones, and we're going to have lipid-soluble. Water-soluble hormones. Great example of water-soluble hormone. Large and in charge, big protein is going to be something like insulin. Great example. All right, so insulin is going to be secreted from a hormone-secreting gland. It's going to be secreted from the pancreas, more specifically from the beta cells in the islets of Langerhans. <clears throat> because it is water-soluble, it cannot pass through the peanut butter core. Remember, it is polar, it is charged, so it cannot pass through this phospholipid bilayer, either this side or this side of these simple cuboidal cells here. So it's going to have to exit these cells via exocytosis. It, it's the only way it could pass through this cell membrane. We saw this in the previous video. So now we have these water-soluble hormones out here, insulin, and these are going to be transported into the blood. Now, once in the blood, what do we know about insulin? It is water soluble. And what is found inside of our bloodstream? The plasma. And what is the plasma made up of? It's approximately 92% water. It's a lot of water. So if the plasma is 92% water and insulin is water soluble, what's going to happen to insulin when it enters the plasma? It's just going to dissolve in the plasma. So any water-soluble hormones, insulin, growth hormone, I mean the list, ADH, it's a big long list, epinephrine, norepinephrine, these are all going to dissolve in the plasma. We'll come back to something that's important about that. But once it dissolves in the plasma, now insulin literally is just going to go along with that plasma, get transported to its target cells. What makes a target cell a target cell? The presence of a receptor. So there'll be a receptor, say for instance, out here on this cell membrane, will be an insulin receptor. And that's going to be communicating with the insulin cytosol with the area uh, around the cell and it's going to in essence be calling the insulin to it so now insulin is going to be transported down to the insulin receptor bind to the insulin receptor and cause some intracellular effects those are going to be covered in other lectures this is just about transportation in the blood so any water soluble hormones chemicals drugs pharmaceuticals that get into the bloodstream they're going to dissolve in the plasma how does this differ from lipid soluble? There's kind of a big difference here. Is lipid soluble don't like water. They are hydrophobic. Great examples. Androgens. So things like testosterone. Cortisol. Aldosterone. And it doesn't have to just be a steroid hormone. It could also be something like T3, T4, which is thyroid hormone, and these are lipid-soluble as well. Now, here's the deal with these lipid-soluble hormones, <clears throat> is that they are going to be produced by these hormone-secreting cells, these glands, such as T3, T4. It's produced by the follicular cells in the thyroid gland. And these cells, after they've synthesized it, we won't worry too much about it, but as they're making it, they're going to 
go through a process of endocytosis and send a T3, T4 into the cell. It's going to get cleaved by lysosomes. You don't have to follow that yet. What's going to end up happening is that we're going to end up with T3, T4 lipid soluble being produced by the cell. And now it could just move from an area of high to low. And it's going to dissolve, um, um, it's going to diffuse through the cell membrane out into the intracellular fluid, and then from there continue to an area of low, moving from high to low, and it's going to move into the bloodstream. So now in here in the bloodstream, we're going to have some, say for instance, T3, T4. Now, here's the problem, is this is lipid soluble. It is not water soluble. It hates water. And this plasma is packed with water. So what's going to need to happen is that this, since it cannot dissolve in water, is going to need to find a friend. What is that friend going to be able to do? Dissolve in water. So what if we had something here in the bloodstream that could dissolve in water already? And if it could come and itself around T3, T4. Then T3, T4 is going to be protected from all that water. This right here is what's known as a plasma carrier protein. And I like to think of it as an analogy, as an Uber. It's an Uber or Lyft, right, for a lipid soluble object. It's a taxi. So T3, T4 can't get to where it needs to go without getting an Uber. T3, T4 cannot get to where it needs to go. It cannot get to this target cell without an Uber. So it's going to call an Uber. These carrier proteins are going to come, pick up the T3, T4, embrace it in this gentle um, you know, interior of the protein, protecting it against all the water. And then from there, this combined unit is going to be transported down near the target cell. And the cell is going to be sending signals out to the carrier protein, and the carrier protein is going to release the T3, T4 at the area around the target cell. And then from there, that T3, T4, once it is released, is going to be able to diffuse from areas of high to low. It's going to enter the cell. It's going to either bind to a cytosolic receptor, like we saw in the last video, or it can just go straight down, act on transcription factors, talk to the DNA, and help to synthesize proteins. Either way, please watch that previous video if you haven't already and you're confused by this. Again, if we have a lipid-soluble hormone, this hormone can diffuse out of the hormone-secreting glands, into the plasma, but the plasma is 92% water, so it cannot dissolve. So what does it need to be transported through the blood? It needs an Uber. That's how I teach all my students. It's an easy way to remember it needs an Uber. It needs a lift. These lifts are carrier proteins. And each lipid-soluble hormone has its own carrier protein. So for instance, testosterone by a testosterone binding globulin, cortisol cortisol binding globulin, T3, T4, thyroxin binding globulin. So these carrier proteins are going to be binding to these different globulins. And one last really important piece of information for all of this is that where do these globulins, these carrier protein globulins come from? We're going to write down globulins. Where do all these globulins come from? Well, there is one organ in the human body that produces over 99% of all plasma proteins. I call it always the bridesmaid, never the bride. It does all the work and never gets any of the credit. And you're going to find this particular organ is interacting in almost every single, well, not almost, in every single system. Every organ system in the human body relies on this organ for function. What organ is this? This is the liver. The liver is my bridesmaid. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. 
the liver is going to be secreting carrier protein globulins. I did not spell that right. Globins? Nope, they're not globins. They're globulins. Always got to correct our mistakes. Globulins. So the liver is going to be producing these carrier protein globulins. Those globulins are going to be going into the bloodstream. These are our carrier proteins. They're going to be picking up lipid-soluble hormones, protecting them against degradation as they're transported through the bloodstream, releasing them near those target cells, therefore allowing those lipid-soluble hormones to have their actions. What this is going to do, last little bit here, what this information is going to allow you to, to do is no matter what, if you have a water-soluble hormone, you know how it's transported. You also, of course, according to the previous video, know how it's released. You know how it acts on target cells. Same goes with lipid soluble. You know how it's released, always through a process of diffusion. And you also now know how it's transported, always via a carrier protein. And what this carrier protein helps to do is not only is it protecting it against the water, but it's going to be protecting it against degradation. So one last little thing is that each one of these, a water-soluble hormone or a lipid-soluble hormone, they are both getting degraded by the human body. They're getting broken down. This process of degradation, we term a half-life. It's the amount of time required to break down 50% half of the original chemical. So the half-life for a water-soluble hormone versus a half-life for a lipid-soluble hormone is the amount of time required to break it down. Water-soluble water hormones, they just go into the bloodstream. They are not bound to a carrier protein because they can dissolve in the bloodstream. Therefore, they are not protected against degradation. So a water-soluble hormone, let's use a different color here, a water-soluble hormone, this has what's known as a very short half-life. It's broken down very fast because it's not protected by the uber versus a lipid-soluble hormone. Because this is protected in the blood by a carrier protein, it's going to have a longer half-life. Now, each one is going to have its own half-life. Growth hormone, insulin, aldosterone, testosterone, they all have different half-lives. So you'll have to go in and look at each particular hormone and learn more about each hormone to figure out what their half-lives in, but uh, what their half-lives are. But in general, the nice powerful thing, the knowledge, this foundational knowledge that you're getting here is that if it's water soluble, it's not protected, therefore its uh, half-life is much shorter. Lipid soluble are protected, therefore its uh, half-life is much longer. I hope you guys found this informative and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Humankind, be both.